Bye. I'm in my car again. I think every video is going to be in my car. This is by no means going to be a how-to. I would not watch this if this is what you're hoping for. Um, it's more so hopefully an encouragement. Um, I don't, I, it d depends where you are, but I, I still feel like people in this profession have a one track mind with things. Um, like you've got to be on the same path as everybody else. So you can increase your chances of getting in somewhere or give yourself the best possibility of it. And so everybody jumps on this bandwagon for years throughout pre-med and it still happens in medical school. I thought it wasn't, but it definitely keeps going. And I just, I wanted to share my experience because I was not that. And I know um, it's getting better. Like people are taking gap years, people are doing Peace Corps and go getting jobs and then figuring out they want to do medical school. And I think that's great. Um, good gap year. Um, I was a barista and a preschool teacher for a year. So anyways, I just wanted to talk about my experience um, leading up to the MCAT to hopefully ease some of your guys' worries. If you're not a traditional student or you're feeling like it's impossible to obtain being a traditional pre-med student. So I killed myself for two years, freshman and sophomore year. I studied countless hours. I was a control freak. I was trying so hard to get this 4.0 GPA, which I was not even close, let me tell you. I, I never had such poor grades in my life like and I'm not even I'm like talking C's I'm talking D's um yeah I had some pretty bad exams and high school was easy um so having that was like whoa should I be doing this because everybody else seems like they're doing fine or at least not failing um and this is kind of a long story short I had this switch of attitude sophomore to junior year where I saw how hard I was working and how the results were not at all rep representing how hard I was working and I was like you know why am I killing myself for these grades like why um and none of my faculty ever said you know what maybe you should just relax um but that's what I did and God was totally at work and he was behind all of this and he led me to this point where I was finally just let go and I was like let's do something that nobody really talks about anymore let's just enjoy studying you know what let's go into a class and be fascinated by the material. Let's not come out of it making sure that I got every single note down and I am gonna cram it all in afterwards and make sure I've perfected it. Let's just sit there, enjoy it, and really master it because uh, because I love it, because it's, 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 it's fascinating. And just this shift of focus of like, you know what? If I get a C, if I get a D, if I don't get anywhere near uh, good grades, I don't care. I'm just going to be at peace with enjoying this. And let me tell you, like, seriously, I, I worked 50% less. Uh, I studied way, way less because I was, I was not obsessive. I was not so, such a control freak. But my mind was free to be curious again. I just, I had this freedom in my mind to just learn again. Um, and it changed everything, everything. And so, and I, and I got, I, my grades were better than they've ever, ever been. And, um, 
and I don't like talking about grades, but it, this is to be encouraging, hopefully. Um, I was like at a low, low 3.0, 3.3, whatever, and was able to graduate with a 3.7. And it was completely because of those last two years that just pulled my grades back up. Um, and it worked out. Like, not a 4.0 student, but I had such peace of mind. And then, um, my year off, I was wanted to take a step back from science. I just wanted to get to know my community. I wanted to talk with people, um, just work on my conversation skills. Like that was something that I kept hearing in my mind over and over. I was like, I wanna just be a person and I wanna learn how to be a person with other people and not with a bunch of students who are all studying the same thing and trying to go to the same place. So I was like, I wanna be a barista. And part of that was because I always was studying at coffee shops and I just loved being in that environment. I loved being around people. Um, I loved the idea of a whole bunch of people coming together, studying, working on different things and just so multifaceted. Yeah, so I decided I wanted to be a barista and then I, that wasn't gonna be enough money. So I was like, let's also be a preschool teacher. I found this really cute preschool um, that I really wanted to work at and I love being with kids and, and that was the other part. I wanted, um, because I think that I wanna, I wanna be a pediatrician. I was like, there's the overlap. I get to work with kids and be around their parents and so that's what I did and much to everybody's dismay. Like you, I heard so many times, you gotta do research, you gotta, you gotta work on a publication, you gotta do this and you gotta do that. And it's gotta be science because when you go to interviews, how are you gonna explain why you decided to make coffee? I had so much fun. I had so much fun. Um, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about um, how I communicate with other people and the weaknesses and the good things. I learned how to really learn how to work in a team and really learn how to understand how to get through differences with a boss or coworkers. Um, things that I, I, I do not believe I could have got in, in a research field. And it's, if, if the whole point of this video is if research is your passion, if you are excited to go into a gap year or whatever, or during your undergrad to do, and because you want to learn about research and you like the protocols and you like getting data and analyzing, do it, do it. That's, this isn't, the point is to not follow people's paths. So I'm not saying what I, if you do what I did, you're going to get where I am. You may not like where I am. So, <laughs> um, the point is to do everything with genuineness and with good intentions and it will work out. And for me, being genuine in that year was being a, a barista and being a preschool teacher. That was genuine for me. Um, and it was, and it's always scary when you don't go the same route as somebody else because there's a lot of unknown, but there's also so much good that people don't talk about when you do. So, did that. Um, I skipped the MCAT part, which is the main thing. So, I took the MCAT twice. I took it summer after my junior year got a 498 yeah so I, I I loved I loved learning I was still in that phase I was still um, loving studying for my classes and loving this new phase of life of just enjoying and absorbing and what what have you and when I had to switch over in the summer to study for the MCAT I was so I was just pissed. I was just in a bad mood about it because I was like, no, I don't want to go back to just doing something to do it and just learning to learn and just getting a an exam score to get one so I can go or so I can so no school or accept me. And I was like, 
it was kind of like a rebellious phase. I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, um, and it was good in the sense where I didn't go back to like, I'm just going to grind out. Um, I'm just going to be, be uncomfortable and be miserable for a couple of months and then take this exam. Took it ag again after my senior year. I went into it with a better mindset because I knew I knew where I messed up and I didn't want to have that that attitude again. And then I I was studying at this coffee shop. This is where I where I studied for a majority of my time during the when I was taking preparing for the MCAT the second time. Um and it was attached to a church. It was very unique. Um and I just I got to know a lot of people. Um I, I have had relationships and talked to a lot of people when I study in coffee shops, but this one, I just had really great conversations with people and um, talked about my faith, uh, talked about their faith, got to know the church, um, and they were just such positive, kind people. Um, so it's such a great and funny thing, funny place that I fell into when I was studying because I just... It just changed my whole, it just, it got me out of that, like, pity party phase that I was in. So I really only got good studying, good studying in the sense where I enjoyed it and where I was really absorbing it because I, I found a way to like it. And I found a way to like it not because I was striving for a score, but again, like it because I found other meaning to it. I was excited to to start this new chapter of my life i was excited for the challenge of it i was excited mm -hmm. to um take all of the information that i did love over the past four years and find it in my study material but it took being in that positive environment so i took it uh, and I got a 501. Yeah, people people were worried. People were definitely concerned. Um, friends who were applying to medical school, friends in medical school, my faculty were very, very doubtful of where I was going to end up. Because again, I didn't have a 4.0. Um, and I had a 501 MCAT. But here we are. I found out, took it in... June and I found out in August that I got into a school. So the point is to summarize, there is hope. Um, and the reoccurring thing in my life is if you're genuine, if you do things because you love it, because you want to be a better person, because you want to be a better person for other people. Not about your resume, not about your elevator pitch, not about what residency directors are going to look at or medical school advisors or whoever. Just be just be genuine. Just and it's way harder than that, but it's true and I think it's so hard and we don't get told it enough because we want surety and we want we want security and we want to know that if I do A, B, C, and D, I'm going to get where I need to be. And so we all stick to this track of just doing things to do them so we can have that security and so we know we're going to get in somewhere. Um, which does work. It does work for people. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. But I, God showed me that wasn't going to be me a long time ago. He showed me that he wanted me to enjoy my life, enjoy the things in it, and to let go. And it's, it's not just about where I get into school, and it's not just about my exams. It's about who I am. And that is not to say you can't be that, being the traditional student. I just, for me, I was miserable and I couldn't do it genuinely. Every one of us has a unique path. Find what best suits you. Don't let your mind be miserable. So yeah, hopefully this helps.